Have you ever felt like there was something guiding you? A voice telling you no, not that? Or telling you yes, that? Maybe it's something you've been seeking and knowing that you're on the right path, the path you chose before you came here. If so, you might be seeking your personal daimon, a guiding voice, a spirit guide who remembers why you're here and where you're going. My research on this fascinating being has led me to create Embrace Your Daimon, a 10-week online program that offers you access to your personal daimon, a way of understanding your destiny. Each week, I'll present my findings on the daimon, informed by sources that go back to the ancient worlds of Egypt and Greece, and that leads us right up to the present day. I'll teach four astrological techniques that will help you get in touch and basically understand the daimon in your life from four very different angles. I'll also present non-astrological ways that you can connect with your daimon on a daily basis going forward. Join me and fellow daimon seekers live every week on Thursdays on this journey into embracing a relationship with your destiny, your inner guide, your personal daimon. Sign up for Embrace Your Daimon starting the 27th of January 2022 now at catroseastrology.com. Hi, my name's Kat and you're watching Cat Rose Astrology. And today I've got a video about the full moon in Cancer, which is coming through on the 17th of January at 27 degrees of Cancer. So let's just start with what a full moon generally means. So just some general significations that we can think about with the full moon are things like uh, something coming to culmination or completion, illumination, bringing clarity to something or shining a light on something. And I'd like to share this little quote from Demetra George, uh, from her book mysteries of the dark moon who says of the full moon now halfway around the lunation cycle the flower opens and blooms so she's comparing the lunation cycle to like the the seeding and the the blooming of a flower the vision is fully illuminated and the evolving soul becomes conscious clearly seeing its purpose and beginning to infuse the meaning of its life into the structures that were initiated built and perfected during the first four incarnations in the same way that the flower has to be pollinated in order to bear fruit, the soul at the full moon phase must open itself to receive someone or something from outside itself into itself in order to fertilize the cycle and bear the fruit. So I really love that. And it reminds me that she, um, Demetra George often compares the full moon to a kind of a relating part of the, the lunar cycle. Um, this isn't really like the new moon where we go inwards and really introspect there's something really extroverted about a full moon and like when i've tried to kind of design my month around the full uh, around the lunation cycle the full moon tends to be a time where i put more emphasis on seeing people engaging with others for example not that this introvert ever really wants to do that but so let's talk about cancer and the meaning of that sign it's the constellation we call the crab it's a water sign it's cardinal or tropical in that it's uh, an initiating sign. It's the moon's domicile and it's the exaltation of Jupiter and the fall of Mars. And it is Saturn's exile or detriment. It's associated with the brightest time of the year, but when the light is starting to diminish, diminish again. So there is a sense that we've kind of peaked at this point in life, um, or at least <laughs> in the year. It's a celebration of life. It represents the entry into the physical world. It's a sign that we associate with nostalgia, with memory, with reflection, because of the moon's uh, natural ability to reflect the sun's light. So a full moon in this sign is basically the mooniest of full moons, basically. We're looking to connect and reflect and ideally do that with others. Uh, you know, this, like I said, this isn't the, the introverted phase of the moon cycle. Ultimately, that's where we're going to be fulfilled here. Quite perfect, I think, for a Venus retrograde, which is currently happening in the sky. Many of us are thinking about the theme of relationships and relating to others um, of all kinds. Um, you know, just questions like, how do I appear to others? Uh, even that in itself is a kind of relating, and it's something that we 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 have to think about the other to, to think about ourselves in a way. So a great full moon for this time. I want to just now give us a bit of context so like I did for the new moon, I'm going to be talking about the, the previous um, like quarter of the moon phase, um, as well as the full moon and then the next quarter. So the, the phase that has just been, it was the first quarter phase. So this came through on the 9th of January at 19 degrees of Aries. 
Um, and at the time, I was kind of like pumped for this. I, when I was writing about this, I was like, this is a really, you know, uh, energetic for a first quarter moon. It's got a lot of like, um, it's got a lot of action behind it. So Venus um, had just been Kazemi in the heart of the sun. Mars was in a pe- perfect trine with the moon. And like I said, I really love that for a first quarter moon in that it is very inceptional. And often these first quarter moons are very difficult. Uh, we're thinking, you know, how do we make this thing happen? How do we manifest something? That's why it's thought of as the crisis in action or the crisis in manifestation. But I would say that this is a place, uh, this is a particular first quarter moon where our action is being supported. Like I said, Venus has just been empowered, reborn as the morning star. And we're being, there's a sense of being energized with the moon in Aries. And uh, when I was writing about this before it happened, I was like, this isn't the best time for maybe considering our feelings of, of ourselves or others right now. Action is kind of more important. Um, and my experience of this was a moon where um, it was almost like my action was getting thwarted by feelings. Feelings were there. There were plenty of feelings. But um, that general feeling tone, um, the, the sort of wanting to go ahead like Aries does, uh, that, that was being held back by more lunar things. So just that, that was my experience. And I'll share with you just to give an example, but like, it would be useful just to go back and reflect on that January 9th and the events of that day and days around it to, to understand that first quarter moon a little bit better. So I recommend reflecting on that experience uh, before we move into the full moon. So this is coming through on the 17th of January at 27 degrees of cancer. The moon is in a trine to Neptune and the South Node. It's also taking um, place opposite Pluto. The question that kind of came to me when I was reflecting on this full moon is, is this what you wanted? You know, it might be a sense that we've bitten off more than we could chew. And now we're feeling the result of that. These late degrees of Capricorn and Cancer have really been very active in the past year. In fact, really since, you know, January 2020, um, we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction um, at 22 degrees of Capricorn. We had Jupiter meeting Pluto at 24 degrees of Capricorn. And Pluto has been around the 25-26 mark since January 2021. And most recently, we had Venus meeting Pluto at 26 degrees. We'll have Mercury station direct at 24 degrees. This is just a lot of stuff happening in these late degrees, particularly of Capricorn. And also that will be affecting any planets or points you might have at those late degrees of Cancer as well. So it's a lot. And if that's you, I just recommend taking time to reflect on these last two years. Not that you you probably have done a lot of that already, but... um, Obviously, globally, we had a lot going on, but I think personally, if you've got places, uh, planets or points there as well, that's important. There's also just a general Plutonic tone to this. Pluto has been the kind of the, st- the steady um, base note that we've had uh, at those late degrees of Capricorn. Um, and it's Plutonic in the sense that, yes, a lot has been transformed for us um, and it's it's been done in you know, arguably a kind of traumatic way. I, I think that's fair to say. We've seen massive, massive structural shifts taking place as a result of these changes. So Capricorn, you know, often representing structure. And a lot of people have made a lot of money out of these times um, and even more have lost money from it as well. And that's, I think, again, a Capricorn side of things. We're thinking about the, the com- like commerce and the kind of material world. And what about the cancer side? You know, this is for me. This has felt more neglected. Um, it's or, or challenged, I should say. It's the moon sign, uh, so we're thinking about emotions, but also mind and body. So anyway, I'm just curious about new stories related to the COVID madness. But as I always say, I'm not much of a mundane astrologer, so I'm more interested in how individuals are experiencing this uh, lunation cycle. So my questions are. You know, what major upheaval has occurred for you since that early 2020? Um, you could even actually go back to 2019 when we had eclipses across the Cancer Capricorn axis. What structural changes have you been forced to make? Where have you neglected or have you neglected the mind, body, soul side of things? I've got a question about pursuit of what's expedient over what's meaningful. This is something else that I think happens when we've got too much 
of this were too much in the Saturn mode of things and not enough in the luminary mode. And um, I'll come back to that in a sec. So the tarot card associated with this Deccan, so Deccan three of Cap, uh, sorry, Cancer, is the four of cups. So this is a, a card that we could associate with daydreaming, apathy, boredom, contemplation. It's this guy sat down, hanging out, uh, and, and he's got some uh, three cups next to him. And he doesn't seem to be aware of the cup that is being, um, that is kind of coming out of the sky towards him. And, and this is what was also making me think about this focus on what is expedient versus what is meaning and not placing and the problem in not placing enough on meaning. Uh, rule number seven in Jordan Peterson's 10, 12, I can't remember how many, 12 rules for life is pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. And this has stuck with me um, as it was a reminder that life isn't about pursuing the quickest, most efficient route. Um, and I actually mentioned kind of I hinted at this when we talked about the new moon in Capricorn um, and that's kind of what that is obviously what kicked off this lunation cycle I mentioned uh, you know a Capricorn tendency might be how do I get to the restaurant the quickest you know most efficient route the expedient route rather than uh, how do I make this meaningful you know do I want to stop and take a photo of something nice and when we've been filling our cups with more this, more that, more gain, speed, power, increase at the cost of what's meaningful, I think we can end up like this guy in the, in the Four of Cups, apathetic, dull, bored, lifeless, even depressed. So I'd say that this is a great time, a great call to action for us to switch off from anything that you connect with expediency, whatever you connect with the hamster wheel um, and actually connect more with what feels meaningful to you. So maybe that's less emails, less Zoom, less social media, and more people you love, nice meals, experiences in the outside world, deep conversations, reflection, journaling, prayer, meditation. The meaning might not come on this full moon, but if it's an intention you set at this lunation to, to pursue what is meaningful maybe, chances are you'll see solutions to find it over the coming weeks. It's also a cup about realigning our vision so that we can see new opportunities, ones that maybe do feel meaningful to us. So again, it's, it's setting those intentions. All right, let's look at the next quarter moon. So this is looking at the last quarter moon at five degrees Scorpio. This is coming through on the 25th of January. And this can be thought of as a crisis in consciousness. It's a hard one with the moon in Scorpio. And the sun in Aquarius, you know, the moon is in its full, the sun is in its detriment, not really the cheeriest place to be. There might be a sense that we're realizing we've wasted our time on something or someone, or we're nursing some wounds, some fallout perhaps from the Venus retrograde, or the result of the full moon's realizations that our vision, our ambitions have been misplaced. Mars has just entered Capricorn as well. So mm, that helps some, it helps in terms of, um, pursuing our actions, you know, pursuing our vision and taking action. But there is a sense that we are mourning something perhaps, or we've, we're realizing again, like I said, that we've misplaced our attention somehow. It's kind of like a lick your wounds, move on kind of vibe, because you honestly, we don't have a better option. There's no point in crying over spilled milk. There's a sense that we're getting a foreshadowing here of the work ahead. Venus will be direct soon. Uh, so that will be a kind of maybe a clear up process coming. So just, again, yeah, this is like a kind of hardcore um, last quarter moon, but um, February does have some really uplifting energetic transits that I like a lot. So this kind of feels like the necessary dark night before the dawn, before we get there kind of thing. So there's plenty to look forward to in the months to come. So to wrap up, I'll give you some journal prompts for this full moon, should you choose to spend some time on these questions. First, reflect on what this Venus retrograde has raised so far. I actually suggested doing this at the new moon as well, but since then, a lot may have shifted. So return to that once more. Note any observations or plot twists in that story. Venus is a morning star now and about to station direct by the end of the month. So there has been a change and because she is in Capricorn, you know, 
this cancer full moon is really um, shining a lot of light onto that. Where have you misplaced your ambitions? Where have you pursued what is expedient rather than what is meaningful? For example, the, the person who has you know, worked really hard to get the wife, the job, the car, the kids, and wakes up one day and realizes he didn't actually want those things. Um, and it all feels empty, meaningless. What opportunities have you missed as a result? Where could you create space for meaningful opportunities to enter your life? So that's what I've got for this full moon in Cancer. I hope you have a lovely full moon, however it plays out. And as always, if you'd like to talk to me about your experiences, you can find out more about the astrology readings I offer at catroseastrology.com. And you'll also see different offerings like my online courses, as well as ways to support the show on the patreon.com slash catrose. And if you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. And of course, you just watching this is greatly appreciated as well. So take care, have a grateful moon, and I'll catch you next time.